your slate is clean. The way that you look at yourself is based on the fact that you had an abortion, the fact that you offended someone, the fact that you lost your job, the fact that you went through a divorce, the fact that you have sinned over and over and over again, the fact that you have lost 50 pounds a hundred times. You understand what I'm saying? We've all failed. And when we fail, that seems to be the thing that sticks in our minds. But God knew us before we were even formed in our mother's wombs. And He knew the plan that He had for us. He saw you and He saw me before we were mistakes. And He sent Jesus to die for us. Sing hallelujah, I'll sing hallelujah. 
just want you, just want God, I just want you, just want I just want you, just want Nobody else will yeah. I just want you, just want Lord, I just want you, just want you I just want you, just want Nobody else will do Yes, oh King of glory Fill this place I just want to be with you I just want to be with you just want to be with you. God is in the prosperity business. I mean it. God wants to prosper you. That whatever that means to you. OK, that's not necessarily billions of dollars. That means that God has a plan for our lives and he's committed to making it come to pass. It's his job. All we need to do is yield in this present time that we're living in. You know, inflation is going through the ceiling. It doesn't have to affect the child of God. In other words, we believe God will provide. We believe he'll provide for you. We believe he'll provide for the house of destiny. We believe that he will give us breakthrough. Do we feel the hard times? Of course we do. We live in them. We have to feel them. But you know what? We're not quitters. God has given us the spirit of endurance. And I'm speaking by revelation right now to you in Jesus name. And I'm saying do not quit because on the horizon, there are blessings in store for you on the horizon or in your future, there is uh, abundance. There is supernatural supply. I call that abundance because it's supernatural, because it comes from God and anything God adds to our life. I don't care if it's one penny or if it's a hundred million dollars, it puts a smile on our face. It gives us, he gives us life and he gives it to us more abundantly. So this is what I'm believing. We are believing God together for you and with you. And you cannot go under because you are the child of God. Don't stop sowing. Don't stop believing. All right. Faith is never static. Keep casting, sowing your seed and keep reaping a harvest. Keep let's keep carrying the vision of the house of destiny. Let's keep carrying the vision of our dear prophet Kim Clement. And matter of fact, for a gift of twenty five dollars or more, you can receive this powerful book of his writing. And I know you're going to want to do that. So as you do, we claim and we speak and we declare blessings over you. And we are saying you're not going under, you're going over. God supplies all of your need, all of the house of destiny's need. And we are blessed and we're able to love the world and to share the good things of God without limitation in Jesus name. Amen. Hello, House of Destiny. We have a new Boots on the Ground missions update just for you. And we are going to update you on all of the things that we 
have our hands into with your seeds of love. Starting with Raja, um, they actually have a TAPVC, and that is a critical congenital condition of the heart needing to be corrected in early infancy in order to survive. So their life is dependent on having a surgery. And it's very interesting because the parents had to travel by train for many hours all throughout the night to be able to get to a specific location to for their child to receive this heart surgery. And it was funded by your giving. So what a miracle came through that surgery with flying colors and Raja is doing well and expected to live a full life. And Miles was born with a large hole between the ventricle of his heart and he was significantly smaller than all the other children his age. And unfortunately, the family, again, same situation, was unable to afford the surgery needed to save his life. But our Unity program was able to get him in, get the entire surgery funded, and that was all because of your giving. So with your seeds of love, these are just two examples of what that does. It goes to save lives, to give hope, to give a future. So your seeds of love aren't falling on infertile ground. It's falling on something that can grow and blossom into true life and have a long life. So you are supplying miracles in children just like these all over the world. If you are watching and you are not yet a partner and you're like, man, I have to become a part of that. Just click the link right there on your screen. Become a partner with us today and let's continue to impact children's lives all around the world. Such a joy to be together, such a joy to go to the Word of God. You know, every time we go to the Word of God, God imparts something supernatural into our lives. I said every time, and I mean every time. And, there's, and then you watch for it. You watch how God moves. You watch how God manifests. And in this, these two broadcasts, the previous one and this one, we're talking about who you are born to be. People ask the question, who am I? Why am I here? Why was I born? Do you know people that have complained that they were born? Because they don't know who they are. And listen, this is a question we've all asked. And because we've all gone through very difficult times and continue to do and will continue to do, a lot of times that discouragement wants to creep up on us, sneak up on us and cause us, want us to quit. And you know what? That's exactly what any enemy wants their opponent to do, is to quit. <laughs> there was a fight one time. Who was it? Sugar Ray Leonard and, and uh, I can't remember, remember the guy he was fighting, but uh, it was a Hispanic guy. And uh, I think he was nicknamed uh, No Moss after the fight because he quit. This is one of the greatest fighters in the world. Sugar Ray beat him because he quit. Unbelievable, you can't quit in the middle of a fight. And we're in a fight, but guess what? It's a fight that we win. Now, it's so important that we understand our identity. You know, the purpose of your life is far greater than your own and my own personal fulfillment. It's not about that. So stop it right now. <laughs> our pe it's not about our peace of mind. It's not about our happiness. Someone said, I thought those were good things. They are good things. It's greater, far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams or ambitions. Someone said, well, what's left? If you want to know why you've been placed on this planet, you must begin with G-O-D, with God. That's right. It was all, oh, I'm not religious. I'm not talking about religion. 
some guy watching and he says, I'm a guy, man, come on, give me, I'm into sports, I'm into, you know, the tough things. Well, listen, there's no one tougher. Do you think there's anyone tougher than Jesus? How many of us could have went to the cross? How many of us could have suffered to the degree that he suffered? Can I tell you something? Jesus is the man's man. And if we want to know who we are and why we were born in this earth, we go to Jesus Christ and he's the only one who has the key to show us why we exist. Second Corinthians 5, 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Listen, that we might become what? The righteousness of God in him. Are you kidding me? That we might become the righteousness of God. Here's the key in him. Why is, why is the righteousness of God, us becoming the righteousness of God staggering? Because we're all sinners, because we all make mistakes. I mean, from the least to the greatest. We're all, unfortunately, we're always seeing another great minister of God fall through immorality. That breaks my heart. Hey, listen, I'm a human being. I'm a, I'm a pastor. I realize if something like that can happen to a great man of God, it can happen to me. If I take my eyes off Jesus, if I get into myself, that's not why God created me. He didn't create me to fall. He created me to rise and he created you to rise. You know, Kim Clement helped people by using the supernatural gifts that God gave him to give people insight into God's plan for their lives. Kim's in heaven, but that's each and every one of our calling to show the, that we are the image and likeness of God and to show how peculiar each and every one of us are, not just our eye color, our hair, color our you know our skin color and and our smile but the god how god created each and every one of us to shine to reflect his image and his likeness in whether you're a football player whether you're a businessman whether you're a stockbroker whether you're a grandfather whether you breed horses doesn't matter what you do. In the marketplace, God wants you to reflect the Son, Jesus Christ. And that's why you were born, because you can uniquely show the world who He is. You are God's calling card. Of course, you can't teach this without going to Jeremiah. Before I shaped you, listen, in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. That's what I had in mind for you. You know what this tells me right now? Your slate is clean. The way that you look at yourself is based on the fact that you had an abortion, the fact that you offended someone, the fact that you lost your job, the fact that you went through a divorce, the fact that you have sinned over and over and over again, the fact that you have lost 50 pounds a hundred times. You understand what I'm saying? We've all failed. And when we fail, that seems to be the thing that sticks in our minds. But God knew us before we were even formed in our mother's wombs. And he knew the plan that he had for us. He saw you and he saw me before we were mistakes. And he sent Jesus to die for us. Do you know that when Kim was underwater being baptized as a Christian, 
that when he was under the water, he heard the voice of God say, I have called you to be a prophet to the nations. When he came up out of that baptismal, those baptismal waters, it possessed him. And guess what? Nobody believed what God spoke to him. Matter of fact, one guy said to him, you're rougher than an old goat tooth. <laughs> That's so funny and it's so true of all of us. When people look at us, they don't see in us what God sees in us. You have to become who God called you to be by revelation from God alone. And when you do tell people what God tells you, they're not going to believe you. So be like Joe. That's what Joseph did and got him in trouble. And we all do it. There's nothing wrong with it necessarily, but it's good to be a little secretive about the things that God speaks to you about. Let God bring them to pass. A lot of times we talk too soon. You know, Jesus himself heard his father say at his baptism, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That was by revelation. The heavens opened and God spoke over Jesus when he humbled himself before John the Baptist and the, and the multitudes. And he went under in baptism, water baptism, to identify with the kingdom of God. You have to identify with the kingdom of God to find out who you were born to be. You can't identify with any human organization first. You have to identify with the kingdom of God. Not with the kingdom of Mormonism, not with the kingdom of Jehovah's Witnessism. I know that sounds, you know, like I'm uh, meaning to offend people. I'm not. You can't even identify with the Protestants and the Catholics, the Pentecostals and the Charismatics. People go to church. That doesn't make us a Christian. What causes us to become sons and daughters of God is to surrender to the person of God is to receive him into our hearts and our lives. And when we have a divine encounter with God, as Jesus did with even with his father, as a human Jesus, he emptied himself and he went through all the steps that you and I have to go through, get to go through. And he discovered who he was, even as Kim did, even when he was baptized, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Peter had a revelation of who Jesus was. I shared that with you in part one. You're the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus turns around and speaks to Peter and says, upon Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The revelation that Peter had of who Jesus was, how he got the revelation and revealing that even to Jesus, you're the Christ, the son, the living God, he said. Jesus said, now, because you have tapped into revelation, I'm going to change your name from uh, bar Jonas to Peter the rock and Peter you are going he's, he's basically saying you're going to become a great apostle in my name I'm going to use you I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom and it's through understanding that God comes first and by revelation of Jesus Christ in any person's life they will discover who they were born to be, sons and daughters of God. The, you know, the apostle Paul started out as Saul and he said that I became an apostle, not by the will of man, not through man, but 
by through the revelation of Jesus Christ, the same way everything comes by revelation. You're saying, you're sitting there right, th right there and you're saying, who am I? You're never gonna know until it comes by revelation from God. That's right. You can't run to a church and find it. You can't go under a rock and find it. You can't go to the depths of the sea or the highest mountaintop. All those things are great. You will only find out who you are by revelation from God. That's the way it is. God has to give it to you. And guess what? God will give it to you. And it's the most beautiful thing in all the world. When your identity is found in Christ, your identity never changes. You are always a child of God. That, that's what Tim Tebow said. And I'm telling you right now, as I, I'm gonna pray with you right now, the Spirit of God is reaching out and wanting to reveal to all of you crying out, Lord, who am I? Who am I born to be? I'm a mother of five. I'm a businessman. I'm in jail. Doesn't matter. I'm a college student. Some might even be preachers, believe it or not. But you're crying out, who am I born to be? And God's going to show you. Father, reveal yourself to each and every one. Show us, Lord, what you've called us to be, what you've called us to do. Even if it's just the start, you'll open up all the rest to us as we take a step by faith into this revelation now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. This week's episode of Real Life, Real Faith, we are discussing difficult family dynamics. If you just did a little <sighs> sigh, that means the show is for you. All of us have got families, all of us have got things that we have to face that are tough to deal with. And I know that on today's episode, we are going to be able to bring some ideas, some thoughts, some wisdom, and I know that you will leave with at least some form of comfort. And we are speaking as well about the importance of holding your peace in the midst of these difficult times. So I'm encouraging you to join us. Go to real-faith.tv. God took me to that future. I was there. I was like, I was experiencing joy. I was experiencing Embarrassing, seeing people being healed of diabetes, Alzheimer's, cancers, all different types of things that man has said we don't have cures for. Let me tell you something, guys. I believe most of these elements that are elements that we have today that they said we don't have a cure for, that there are cures. Because remember in that prophetic word, God says, because of the greed of man, they have oppressed it. They have kept it hidden. But God directed me to plead the blood every day when I pray, and I'm telling you again to do this. Plead his blood over everything. And he said, when you do this, the blood will bring up to the surface that which is held down or trying to be kept secret in the deep. The things that are hidden, God says, the blood will bring it about to where it will be revealed. We here at the House of Destiny are partnering with you to let our, our viewers, of course, know about your company. It's Beverly Hills Precious Metal. Andrew, explain how that works. So I'll walk you through it right now. So if you go to BH dash pm.com right there on the home page you'll see a form that you could fill out and that form is very important in letting us know how we can help you so you just put in your first name last name email address phone number there's a section that says how did you hear about us and in there put kim clement and then there's a portion where you could write a couple of notes down on the bottom usually within about 24 to 48 48 hours we'll contact you by phone call and then we'll go over everything with you. This isn't a high pressure deal. We always recommend that uh, if you feel uncomfortable, take a step back, pray about it, 
you will gain the answers that you need by doing that and come back to us when you're comfortable. I'm excited to announce we're having a huge MyPillow spring sale. And here's a few examples. Buy one of our MyPillow 2.0s, you get another MyPillow 2.0 absolutely free. Made with cooling technology, the best pillow ever just got even better. And this just in, nine brand new colors and styles of our Percale bed sheets. They're made with the finest long staple cotton, and now you can save 50% or more. That's as low as $24.98. And for the first time this year, I'm bringing you our My Slippers and Sandals for as low as $25 a pair. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen, use your promo code to get your MyPillow 2.0s, buy one, get one free. Per Kale Sheets, as low as $24.98. My Slippers and Sandals, as low as $25 a pair. And for a limited time, when you order $75 or more, your entire order ships absolutely free.